Prezi is often misused, so before we start learning about how to use it, I prepared a demonstration to explain what it is and also why you would use it and some of its features. Prezi is a tool to create a slideshow presentation much in the same way that you might use PowerPoint for, but Prezi does more and that's what we're going to look at today. Like PowerPoint, you organize your content into slides, although we don't call them slides, uh, like in PowerPoint, but you can think of them in mostly the same way. You can add text and images and video. It has some of the same rules as PowerPoint. You should keep your content pithy. Don't just speak the same words that are written on the screen. Instead, use bullet points and images as a, as a starting point and then talk about what's on the screen. But all of this is what PowerPoint already does. Prezi can obviously do a lot more. So Prezi lets you work from a bigger collection of data and information, which is the big picture, the overview of the presentation. You control which parts of the big picture that the audience sees at each step along the way using transitions to pan the, pan the view up and down and left and right. Um, you can zoom in and out, and this lets you focus attention on the details but it puts the detail into a larger perspective, and we'll, we'll get a better idea of, of what that all means in a second. So you can you control the zoom level of your view. You can zoom out to show the entire big picture of your whole presentation, and then zoom in to focus on one little detail. However, there's more to using Prezi than just using these transitions randomly. Using Prezi over PowerPoint is more than just is more than just looking fancy. Transitions in Prezi shouldn't be random or gratuitous. Um, these transitions can add meaning and context to your, your uh, presentation in ways that PowerPoint can't really replicate. Using transitions correctly can make Prezi very, very powerful. So we're going to look at some example Prezi presentations, um, examples of how transitioning from one slide to another in different ways can add context on top of what each individual slide uh, with the content within it uh, says. So this is a demo about how you might use the panning transition. Uh, panning is the movement up, down, left, or right um, from one spot on the screen to another. This presentation is about a road trip that someone might have taken. They want to show where they've been and what they saw. So we start by zooming in on the starting city but then pan to the first stop, which is Niagara Falls. And once we're here, we can treat it like a regular PowerPoint slide where we add text and bullet points and photos. So next we go on to Florida, and the, the, you can see that the panning kind of conveys the motion of moving from New York to Florida. Um, it shows the direction that you would move, where from Boston to Niagara Falls, it goes left or uh, west, and from Niagara Falls to Florida, you go south. And next stop to San Francisco, and we're done. So where PowerPoint could have shown the full map and then the individual slides at each location, Prezi does this as well, but it also conveys the motion of actually traveling between these places. It puts the slides in, in a context of being locations on an actual map while still showing the individual detail of each slide. We started showing the big picture, the, U, the United States map and the, the path that our whole presentation would take. Then we showed the detail, a detailed view of each stop panning from one stop to the next, um, and that gives context to each stop. The context is their physical location in relation to each other. This next example will show how zooming out from content can put, uh, put that content into perspective. However, before we can zoom out from something, we'll first have to zoom in to get there, so here we go. So in reality, if we were showing this as a real presentation, we might start from this view. Um, in our case, since it's an example and we had other stuff on the screen, we had to kind of zoom in to get here first, but we might very well start from this view. So we see a line graph with a title and a comment, but then we zoom out to put that detail that we just saw into perspective. This can, like I said, this can be more effective if we had started just with that small view and didn't know that this bigger view was coming. Um, you show the first detail and you explain that one detail and then you zoom out and you put that one little detail into perspective of the, of the bigger picture. So we see one small piece, but then we see how that bit is one piece of something bigger and also where it fits in. 
So next we'll see an example of how zooming in can let you focus in on individual details inside of a larger subject, so kind of the opposite of what we just saw. So the last example featured zooming out to put the important detail that we see first into context with other pieces of related information in the bigger picture. And here we start with showing the big picture, in this case, in this example, a timeline of battles in the Civil War. Um, obviously this is very rudimentary, just uh, a quick example, but you can see how something like this could be uh, developed into more detail. Um, in this case, each battle is shown as a timeline uh, with a flag that represents the victor, uh, the color of the flag representing the victor. So let's focus on one battle in particular, Gettysburg. We have the name and some general information, and we can see that the battle uh, has its own timeline, and it took, takes place over four days. Level, we're back to just making this look like a PowerPoint slide. Then we can use the panning transition to move on to the next day, and we could even zoom in a little bit further from there. So zooming lets you drill down on the details, and right now we're in one individual picture of an in individual day of an individual battle, which is just one of the full timeline. We get to focus in on one little bit of content without losing the content's place in the larger and larger arrangement of other pieces of content. A little shaky there, but we can see um, how one vivid, important little tiny detail as, as you know, we're looking at this picture and this is kind of a powerful picture, and yet when we zoom back out, we see how small that, even that one important little picture, how small it is in comparison to the rest of a, a bigger thing, in this case, this, this timeline. So you'll notice that between each of these examples, I return to this overall view. That's another way to use Prezi's transitions and placement of content. When you organize your presentation and you put each section on a different location on the screen and then show the audience that bird's eye view like this when switching from one major topic to the next, it can help people keep their information that they're being presented, uh, it can help them keep that information organized in their own heads. This is especially useful when each subject is placed on the screen in a relevant way. Uh, we saw this in the first example where each slide, each, each stop in our path was um, placed in a location that was important to it. Um, in this case, it's a location on a map. And when we went from one to the next, it, the, the data was placed on the map in a location that adds relevance to the, to the content. Um, in, the sec in the third example, we saw this again in a different way, where the location of, of each slide represented the progression in a timeline uh, chronologically from one battle to the next. However, even in a presentation like the one we're um, watching right now, uh, where the different sections don't really have any inherent logical placement on the screen, there's nothing about each of these four sections that, you know, plan panning doesn't have to be in the top right, and zoom out doesn't have to be in the top left. But just doing it in this way and kind of coming back to the bird's eye view and then before going into the next section, this helps the audience kind of follow along and, and see where they are in the progression of our, our full presentation. And returning to the overview each time lets the audience structure the information that they've learned, um, kind of place it in their heads in the same kind of areas where they're separately placed on the screen here. So, I hope you have enjoyed my presentation, and if you have any questions, please feel free to email me or leave a comment to this video. Thank you.